Hey there. Hey there, Lorenzo. Johnny C. Movie Preview Show. How are you doing today? Very good. So uh, you're in uh, Providence for Hascon. Yeah, absolutely. Come on. This is one of the great places. To, this is where it's happening, right here. Right here, right now. Yeah. yeah. So uh, could you tell me a little bit about your uh, time here this weekend? Are you having a blast? Well, I just got in this morning, and I am having a blast because, you know, you're around a lot of the fans, and one of the great things about working on Transformers is that you get to feed off the energy of the fans, you know? And it really, as a, as a filmmaker, it really gives you sort of like, it's sustenance. Yeah, sure, sure. It's a, a creative uh, fluid, essentially. Yeah, it keeps you going. Now, you've been with Transformers from the beginning. So, uh, could you talk maybe a little bit about the legacy? Having come from 2007 on the first one, and then, you know, uh, um, eight, uh, the last night, uh, the most recent one, and where you might be going in the future. Well, you know, what's interesting is when you set out to, to, to go down this road, you don't know it's going to last this long. So I have to say we didn't expect to be here 10 years later, but because we are here, we've gotten to enjoy an incredible, um, really an incredible piece of intellectual property that just has so many uh, permutations. And I think for us, the trick is to avoid what a lot of sequels have failed at, which is to be fresh. And it's really hard because, you know, you're successful, so you kind of feel like you should replicate the success because the audience is telling you that's good. But if you do that, you kind of feel stale. So how do you keep reinventing yourself is, is really a big part of trying to maintain something over a long period of time. And, and uh, it's one of the reasons why we decided to do the Bumblebee movie because it is set in 1987, so it's prior to all the movies. So you're sort of free of the let's call the timeline of those movies and uh, and we took and we decided to make a smaller story in the sense of we dealing with less transformers so that the audience can really connect more and get really deep into a character in this case Bumblebee gotcha gotcha now can you confirm that the aesthetic will be the same from the the series of movies or are you gonna change some of the visual aspects of the robots uh, it's definitely changed. Oh. Um, it is uh, somewhere between where you first got aboard Transformers G1, maybe, and and the Transformers movie. So it's somewhere in the middle there. Okay, uh, right on. It definitely has a very distinctive uh, quality. Uh, Travis has a very specific... Travis Knight, who's our director, has That's a right. very specific creative vision for it. One of the reasons we hired him was for that, um, because we felt like, first of all, you can't compete with Michael Bay on action. And if we're going to do a spin-off, what's different about it, right? You don't want just to feel like some kind of cheap knockoff that you're trying to make money with and that's that. So uh, we purposely looked for a guy like Travis who was going to have his own unique vision, uh, who would be respectful of what we've seen, but at the same time not feel beholden to it. Gotcha. Yeah. Excellent. So now, uh, as far as the new Bumblebee spinoff, can you tease the fans with when we might be able to see like a trailer or some posters or some images? Uh, well, I think a few images have appeared out there. There's been some uh, uh, fan photos catching Bumblebee out there. But uh, probably uh, in the beginning of next year, somewhere around there, is when you'll start seeing actual marketing materials. Uh, a big game, perhaps, maybe? Well, you never know. You never know. We'll see. We'll see if well, that's up to Paramount. But, of course. you know, we're going to come out next December. So typically, you don't go on Super Bowl for that. So That's true. Um, as much as that's attractive, uh, probably not, I'm guessing. Gotcha. Now, beyond Bumblebee, what can you say for the Transformers? Any crossovers or anything else happening in the future? Well, um, I think one of the interesting things that happened when we did this writer's room, and everybody has a slightly different interpretation of what went down there. For myself... So, you had, just to recap, you had Robert Kirkman, you had Stephen S. DeKnight, uh, you had a lot of really great writers. Akiva Goldsman? A lot of talented people, men and women. And um, what really, for myself, what came out of it was an explore they explored the mythology and tried to fill out the mythology. And when that happened, it sort of broke the mold of our typical thinking about what is a sequel. Uh, a sequel could be a time travel movie. A sequel could be a World War II movie. A se you know. So as you began to look at the timeline and look at the different opportunities, I think it will give us the opportunity to continue the series in a way where we're not beholden to following one movie after another after another, which is, from a creative point of view, really exciting, but also I think for the audience, 
unexpected and they can't really guess where we're going. You can branch sideways Absolutely. and then that can be a different thread. Absolutely. Timelines. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us. Appreciate it. Have a good one.